What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Kara Corey here and I had taken to the Insta stories asking you guys to send me your nutrition questions because I wanted to do more of like a rapid fire Q&A type deal. I know you guys love the dietitian talks and sometimes those go very long and a lot of you guys email me questions, DM me questions and I just don't have time to respond to everyone. So these are always a great way for me to answer your questions and hopefully help some of you out who are maybe having some of the same questions. So before we dive right into Bite Size Bits with Kara Corey, uh, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and also go ahead and hit that little post notification bell, ring that dingling so you guys know when each and every one of my videos are uploaded. I'm gonna try to keep it quick, which as you know is really hard for me, but I'm gonna keep it concise and speak from my own professional experience and just personal experience for you guys. Question number one says, do macros really matter in body composition or is it strictly just the calories? It's a great question because body composition in terms of how your overall body looks, the macronutrient split does matter. Now, if you're just talking about trying to lose weight at the end of the day, a calorie restriction is gonna do the job. But in terms of how your overall body composition looks in terms of muscle mass, fat mass, just how everything is displayed, that macronutrient distribution will make a difference. So it is important to pay attention to your proteins, your fats, your carbs. Caffeine cleanse, will it help at all or is that a myth? A caffeine cleanse is really stressful for me to talk about, but yes, I do think it can be helpful depending on how much caffeine you are consuming. If you are someone that is constantly drinking a lot of coffee, pre-workouts, energy drinks, and you just feel like you have to keep adding more and more into the mix to actually feel the benefit of the stimulant, then a caffeine cleanse, I hate the word cleanse, but that may be for you. So you should maybe either wean off a little bit or you can try to go cold turkey, but it does get a little rough. You do tend to have withdrawal symptoms from the stimulants, but again, if you do wean yourself down or take a little break, what you're gonna find is when you start adding caffeine back in again, your tolerance is gonna be a little bit different. So it is a good way to help adjust your tolerance a bit if you feel like you're going like way too cray with the caffeine. Best way to find an RD in your area. I find this funny because a lot of people I've heard struggle to find an RD. I'm gonna link for you either, we're gonna put it here in the video or down in the description box, the actual link for you guys to go to. It's gonna be eatright.org backslash find an expert. So that's a great resource for you. You go in there, you just type in your zip code and that's gonna bring up for you any local RDs in your area. It's not gonna be all inclusive because as an RD to have your name on that list, you have to actually make sure that you get added. You have to request to be added into that directory, but that's gonna be the easiest way for you to locate an RD in your area. Um, this person also asks, how does insurance work? Well, with dietetics, uh, only certain conditions are actually covered by insurance. Um, so you need to actually look at your insurance coverage, but what you can also do is I think a lot of people ask this question when they're working with a private RD, you know, online consulting or just a private uh, RD in your area. If they don't take insurance, what you can request from them is something called a super bill. And what that basically is, is like a detailed, it's more detailed than an invoice. Uh, the dietitian will need to actually include certain codes of what was conducted during the session. They're gonna use diagnostic criteria for um, what was done, uh, an invoice total, things like that. So with your super bill, you can provide that to your insurance company and hopefully you could possibly get some type of of reimbursement but again you know it's usually things like diabetes chronic uh, renal insufficiency insufficiency and things like that that are covered unfortunately in this world we don't really have preventative insurance plans although maybe someday how much protein do you really need a day this is a good question I actually have a whole separate video on that but in a nutshell um, the RDA is actually fairly low, I would say, but it's gonna depend on the on the person in terms of their sex, in terms of your activity level, and in terms of your age. Those factors all play into it. A lot of people say, oh, we eat too much protein. 
when people look at it as a whole, sometimes we actually eat too little. Um, I'm gonna also link for you guys a really great calculator that you can go and utilize from the USDA. When I entered in my information, my protein came up fairly low, but generally speaking, you can basically double the RDA for what you should be consuming. So I usually recommend for clients anywhere from 15 to 25% of your total daily calories coming from protein is is a good guideline that's a safe guideline for what you're going to consume you got to adjust that based on if you're working with a bodybuilder or if you're working with a little old lady geriatric who's sedentary so it's really going to vary based on the person next one is how much water do i really need to consume well there isn't an actual rda that's recommended dairy dietary allowance or dri dietary reference intake there's actually no set amount but there are general recommendations out there from the food and nutrition guidance group um, so what they found as a whole when they looked at it is the vast majority of people do consume enough to stay adequately hydrated that's a very general statement but hydration doesn't just come from water hydration comes from everything you consume that's not just fluids that's also food so that's another component when you're a dietitian and you're factoring in how much someone's consuming you're gonna look at what foods they're consuming as well because there's also an amount of hydration you're getting from your food Generally speaking, not everyone needs a gallon a day. Their baseline recommendation was found to be about 90 ounces for females and about 125 ounces for males to strive for. Again, it's gonna vary based on your activity, how much you're sweating and things of that nature, but those are just general guidelines for you to utilize. And if you find that, oh my gosh, I just can't drink 90 ounces of water, you don't have to. Think about what fruits and vegetables you're consuming. Think if you're consuming yogurt and pudding and milk and all those other things that adds into it too. Next one says, please bust the cleanse myth. Now I already alluded to the fact that I just hate the word cleanse, but this is actually a really not a controversial topic, but it really lacks a lot of clarity, not only amongst the lay person, but amongst us in the science community. Um, the word detox and cleanse, I think means very different things based on who you're talking to. Um, toxins and detoxifying have different definitions based on how you're utilizing them. And unfortunately, in 2018 you see all these detox teas and cleanses that have kind of muddied the science behind true detoxification which for most RDs who whether you take a holistic approach to detoxification or not most dietitians can agree that detoxification occurs in your body constantly right we have detoxification organs like your liver is your number one detoxifier you need your liver to be functioning properly so don't kill it with all that alcohol kids you need that to be functioning properly to help rid your body of the xenobiotics which are just those foreign chemicals in the body that can build up and possibly cause other harmful complications to your health now how you go about actually cleansing or detoxifying, I think we can all agree here that it's not necessarily going to need to occur through a cleanse, through a special tea. However, from a nutritional standpoint, I think we can all say that a healthy diet, you know, there are things you can do to technically cleanse and better detoxify, but that doesn't mean starving yourself. It means putting the right nutrients back into your diet means having the right nutrition in there, whatever it may be that your body's lacking, maybe based on biochemical markers, um, and, and possibly supplementation as well, depending on what your diet does or does not include. So as a whole, their detoxification is a real thing. Your body is detoxifying on a daily basis. However, the bullshit cleanses, teas, and expensive marketing things that are out there are not the way you have to go about it. So I'm gonna bust that myth, however, shed some light on the fact that detoxification is real and there are things that you can do within your diet to eat better, to be able to better detoxify your body. Next question says, when losing fat, people say calories are the only thing that matter, but then other nutritionists, <coughs> mean dietitian, say calories don't matter, but the quality of the food you eat is what matters, which is true. Okay, so here's the thing. When it comes to losing fat, folks, it does not matter what you're putting in your body. I could lose fat 
purely eating cookies and ice cream if I put myself on a caloric restriction. That is the truth. Find the science that'll tell you otherwise. It does not matter. I could eat the poorest quality diet and lose fat. It's all about that person's current makeup and getting yourself into a caloric restriction. However, is that person gonna be healthy? Probably not. Is that person gonna look good? Probably not. Are they gonna lose fat? Yeah, they're gonna lose fat. So as a dietitian, what I'm gonna tell you is quit worrying about just losing fat. And it's okay to lose fat if you need to. We need to worry about that, yes. But focus more on the quality of what you're putting into your body. It will make a difference with how you feel in your health and your performance on a day-to-day -day basis and the quality of your life, which is so much more than losing those measly little three pounds. So that's, that's the tea on that. I can't stop saying that. I'm watching too much Jeffree Star. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up Bite Size Bits with Kara Corey. If you guys enjoyed this style of video, please make sure to hit the like button. That lets me know you enjoy this type of video. Make sure to comment below if you'd like to see more of these. It's a fun way for me to answer your questions and help quickly bust some myths, yo. So stay tuned for the next video and stay tuned. I, I, I lost it. <laughs> Bye. Bye, bitches. <laughs>